There has been some rapid advances in the field of computer vision in the recent years and a lot of that credit goes to deep learning and in particular convolutional neural networks. So let's see some of the cool examples of uh, computer vision using deep learning and that will motivate you further to study this convolutional neural networks. So one of the simple examples applications of computer vision where deep learning is doing superb is object classification. So object classification means uh, given an image, let's say you want to find whether this image is of a cat or a dog. So that is called simple image classification. Then if you go further, we do object detection. So this is an example of object detection where you just don't need to uh, give the class of the image, but instead you need to give the bounding box where the object is located in the image and there can be multiple objects in the same image. So in this example, you can see that uh, there is a dog in this green bounded bounding box. So it's giving the location as well as the class. Then in this purple box, you can see a bicycle and there is a car in the top right corner in this orange bounding box. So it gives the classes as well as uh, their location. So here deep learning is doing tremendous job and these uh, were uh, the accuracy level was very less a few years back before deep learning got popular in the computer vision. Then another application can be that you see here a black and white image and this has been converted to a colored image using the application of deep learning. And uh, deep learning is doing uh, great in many other applications and one of the cool applications is this. So here you see two images. This is image one, this is image two and this is the output. So we will come in a minute. What is this output? So this is the image of a golden gate bridge. This is an actual image. So we will call it content image. And you can see another image. This is the image drawn by a famous painter. So we will call it style image. And what we will do with these two images is that every painter has a style of painting. Similarly, uh, different camera model or different images have a style as well as some content in them. Even if you draw it by a sketch using your pencil, then that image will still represent the same content. That is, there is golden gate bridge in that image. So content is fixed, but you see you can re represent the same content in multiple styles. So you want that, uh, you want to imagine how that same painter would have painted this golden gate bridge. So you can provide a style image, you can provide a content image to a deep uh, neural network and you can train it so that it will be able to combine these and generate this output image. So it will borrow the style from this and content from this. And here you can see that it roughly represents this Golden Gate Bridge and style looks pretty similar to this painter's style. So this application is called Neural Style Transfer. Then uh, another application is this image in painting. In painting. So this has a uh, very uh, multiple useful applications. Let's say you have an image, but some part is occluded by some unwanted object and you want to uh, replace that with the, if uh, the object is not present in the image. So you have taken some image of a scenery, but you saw that some random object came in between. So you can uh, remove that part and feed it to the network and it can generate the missing part based on the content. So here, here you can see that many parts of this person's face is missing and this has been filled using a deep learning. And there are many more applications. We cannot list all of them since there are many, many applications of these. You can even draw a sketch and the deep neural network may convert that into a realistic looking image. So if you draw this Golden Gate Bridge, maybe the network understands and understands that it's Golden Gate Bridge and tries to convert that to a realistic image. Similarly, if you draw trees or mountains like that and uh, in real time, the network can convert them into some realistic looking color images and fill it with natural texture and colors. And there are many, many more applications of these. You may use uh, CNN, convolutional neural networks, to find 
uh, what is the depth map of a given image uh, what is the white balance how you would correct the white balance auto color and other corrections also so it has huge number of applications so now uh, i think these examples are good enough to motivate you to understand convolutional neural networks and computer vision but the question is that we have studied plain neural networks feed forward neural networks so why cannot we use that for computer vision applications why we need a different type of neural network for this convolutional neural network so let's see a few reasons why we need a different type of uh, neural network and the plain neural network will not work that well here so one of the reasons is that let's say uh, we want to uh, create a object classifier simply here let's say or object detector or classifier whatever you may like so this is a very small image 64 cross 64 and we want to know whether it's the image of a cat or not similarly this is another image so in this case we have 64 cross 64 pixels which is very small by modern standards and we would not be seeing such small images in practice too much so here you can get a total of 4096 and then you have three channels rgb so multiply by three still you have a small number let's say 12k or slightly more so you can still work with a plain neural network and each pixel can be thought of as a uh, number or a feature and then the network can learn, learn whether cat is present or not but let's say take some realistic image like thousand cross thousand so you may not find a big difference here since uh, these are uh, scaled down to a very low value but if you zoom it out or see it on a bigger screen you will see the difference so let me do it for you so here you see that this is the same image so you can clearly see that this looks quite blurry this 64 cross 64 image but this 1000 cross 1000 image still looks quite clear and quite sharp if you even enlarge it further you will see the difference so let's say you have some realistic image like this so you have uh, 1000 cross 1000 image and then you have three channels rgb so in total we have 3 million numbers and you can feed these three numbers three million numbers as an input to this deep neural network so let's say these numbers are x1 x2 all the way up to x3 million so input is of 3 million dimension and then let's say the next layer is not that big maybe it's has just 1000 neurons so uh, this from each of these 3 million inputs it will connect all the thousand nodes in the next layer so for one input we have thousand weights w11 w12 w13 all the way up to w1000 similarly for second input also we will have thousand so for three million input we will have total of these weights these will be thousand times three billion that is three billion so for this layer we will have the matrix containing the weights which will be 1000 cross 3 million that is total 3 billion weights weights are there and we want the network to learn 3 billion weights using back propagation and there will be a few more weights in further layers but a big chunk of that will be covered by this so you see that uh, we need a tremendous amount of data to learn those many weights those many parameters so we have 3 billion plus parameters here to learn so we need a huge huge number of uh, training examples and also learning 3 billion plus parameters would not be computationally feasible with the modern state of the art so this is just one of the regions let's look at another region why we need a specialized type of neural network for this let's say again uh, we want to build a cat classifier or cat detector and let's say uh, in our training examples the cats are located in the this region so here for illustration purpose i have taken a very small image 4 cross 4 in real example you will have something like 1000 cross 1000 or even more so here uh, if we feed it to a neural network what we will do 
we will have here 4 cross 4 so 16 16 weights will be there x1 x2 x3 x16 corresponding to each pixel so maybe this will go here next one will go here next will go to this or let's uh, let's continue uh, and the last one will go here and there will be other uh, edges also going to other nodes one of these 16 so let's say we have trained the network where the cat was present in these top four pixels let me draw it in a different color this green and this will go somewhere and this one will go somewhere so these four green edges uh, there are more nodes here more connections so we we'll learn by back propagation so ultimately we will have one output whether it's a cat or not and then we will back propagate and do the gradient descent so here these four weights that are in green let me call them a b c d corresponding to the pixels of this cat where this cat is located these will get updated and these will learn to detect cat so when we get a new image here the cat is located here but if you take this neural network that is trained to detect cat in the top left corner so in that these four weights are very critical weights corresponding to these four pixels and again i am reiterating these are not four it will be much larger it's just for illustration so here uh, these four weights will go to this neural network the same neural network that we trained so here i am drawing in white so these are trained for cat detection but in this case unfortunately the cat is located in the bottom right corner so maybe these yellow edges are the actual one which contain the information of this cat so this network will fail and it will not be able to detect cat since these weights these four edges which correspond to detecting cat in this region for which the network was trained will say that no no i don't find a cat here so it will convince the network that output zero there is no cat here so this is another uh, drawback of a simple neural network for computer vision applications so uh, parameters learned in one part of the image cannot be used in other part of the image so in the we will see why we need convolutional neural network so there we will be working with not so many parameters but we will be working with convolutional kernel and this is not a new concept this convolution it has been used in image processing for a long time and this is the building block of convolutional neural networks so here we will irrespective of the image size we will have a fixed size kernel maybe 3 cross 3 9 cross 9 or larger here only these uh, nine numbers will be learned so if these uh, you take a convolution here and it's able to detect it then the same uh, learned weights can be used for detecting anywhere in the image since in convolutional neural networks what we will do we will first place the kernel here whatever is the size of kernel let's say 2 cross 2 then we will shift it to the right and next we will place it here then we will place it here then we will move it down and place it here and so on the same kernel will be slided over the entire image so if it learns to detect cat in this region these weights then the same uh, kernel can detect cat here also so here both the drawbacks are corrected one we will be working with very small number of parameters number of parameters will be this size of the kernel if it's 9 cross 9 then we will have 81 parameters to learn which is much much less than this huge number of 3 billion parameters and the second is that if it's trained on one part of the, of the image and you translate that object in that image still that kernel can easily detect object or other features for which it, it is trained in other parts of the image so let's uh, with this motivation let's uh, begin this journey towards learning convolutional neural networks